guys, this is Emma from Aabel here. Today I thought I would do a little comparison video testing different watercolour paints at different price points. So to start off, uh, I've got the very first watercolour paints that I ever bought, these Royal and Len Nickel watercolour tubes. These retail for $24 in a 24 set, so about a dollar a tube. And um, they're from Spotlight. I actually had a like a 30% off coupon, so I didn't even pay a dollar a tube. These ones are super affordable, really accessible. You can get them probably, you know, probably anywhere. I mean, there are Spotlights all over the country. But yeah, I used these ones for a really long time. They have a special place in my heart because they were my first. But um, yeah, I haven't used them in a while, only because I, I did kind of upgrade eventually. Next were some watercolours I saw in my local news agency. They retail for about $8 a tube, but these were on clearance and I got them for 4 so never be ashamed to buy things on clearance. Uh, these guys are Derivan watercolours, and it says professional artist grade. Um, because they were so cheap, I, I am curious to see how they do stack up against my actual other professional quality watercolour paints. But yeah, these ones are definitely still quite affordable. Uh, next we've got my Van Gogh travel set. These are student quality paints. It's a little set of how many? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 half pans. I got these in Amsterdam while I was traveling, but I've seen them in the US as well. In the US I think they're about $20 a pop. Um, you could probably find them in Oz as well. But yeah, I love this travel set. Whenever I go anywhere, like Coffs Harbour or, you know, when I'm overseas visiting my family and stuff, this is always what I take with me. Uh, last but not least, I've got my new favourite toy. I've got these Windsor & Newton full pans. So the story with these, Windsor & Newton obviously is like a very famous brand. Um, right when I was starting out on, um, when I was first starting out with art, all of the YouTubers I saw had Windsor Newton paints and like, the, I don't know, all the paintings were so beautiful and I always like dreamed of having nice professional quality paints, but they are super expensive. Like if you're looking to get the watercolour tubes, they range anywhere from $16 for series one, all the way up to like 30, 40, sometimes even 50 bucks for series four paints. So these pans though were a bargain. I got them for $8 from my local art store. So yeah, if you can get your hands on some of the pans, these are really good value for money. There are series like, you know, one, two, three, and four, all for the same price. So yeah, definitely keep your eye out for these. Uh, you've probably noticed I'm only going to be using the primary colours for this little experiment. That's just to keep things as fair as possible. And it'll also give us a chance to see how the paints mix together and um, any cool granulation effects that they have. And the image that we're going to be drawing is, I've got this cool, cool dude here, let me see if it's showing. Uh, I drew him just on some Archer's watercolour paper. Uh, he kind of reminds me of like a cool like tech dad, you know, the type that has like the Bluetooth earpiece and I don't know, I, th I thought it would be kind of fun to keep it, keep it as regular and as um, even as possible. That's why I'm drawing a painting, the same image four times over. Alright, let's get started. Interesting. I'll talk you through the results real quick. So as you can see, Windsor & Newton definitely has uh, the most um, profound, the, the most obvious granulation effects. When I try to do the skin tone there, the, the reds and the yellows and the blues really did separate. So that's what that band is going down the side of his face. Um, yeah, and I just, I love 
the hair on the Winsor and Newton um, face. Like the hair, if you at first it just looks like a dull sort of reddy brown, but the closer you look, you see flecks of blue and green, and it really does add quite a beautiful effect. Um, it, it wouldn't be for everyone. I would say that if you are trying to paint like a realistic face, doing it the way I did won't get you the results that you are envisioning. Um, or at least maybe, maybe I'm just not that skilled in it. I don't know, but I think maybe even buying like a pre-made tube of some more earthy tones or some more skin colours would probably get you some more predictable results. Um, but for like landscapes, I think this would be beautiful. Uh, cartoons or aliens, cool creatures. The Winsor & Newton paints did a really, really good job. Moving on to the Van Gogh paints, you did see a lot of cool granulation effects there as well, especially in the hair. Like when I was laying down the hair initially, it was going to be like this dark purpley brown colour. And these like blue tones just kind of shot through and it was really cool to see. Uh, you also get that in the shadows on his face as well. With the skin, um, I guess it could have something to do with the amount of water I used, but it was like a very thick, vibrant colour. Uh, it was a little bit hard to kind of tone it down without muddying it. But still, I think you, you get a really cool effect with, like, um, with the blooms on the face as well. So I obviously added too much water to one side of his face, and that pushed a lot of the pigment down to the line going across his eye. Uh, so that's a cool effect. Again, if you were using it to do some sort of like landscape or abstract painting, that would work really, really well as well. Going on to the Derivan paints, you can definitely see that the amount of granulation has decreased, but it is still there. And again, like I talk about granulation like that's like the one goal you want to achieve with watercolour, and that may not be the case for everyone. If you're wanting to get uh, really reliable and like predictable results like you have a very specific vision in your head and you want to like lay down the paint like you would a marker or like an acrylic paint then I think Derivan and the um, Royal and Langnickel paints definitely will get you the results you want a little bit uh, more precisely. With Derivan you can see some granulation um, in the hair in particular it's like mostly red but then you do get like little uh, streaks of blue in there, which is quite cool. The skin tone again was a lot more predictable um, aside from that, that bloom that I got on the chin and on the nose, but that, was, that had more to do with the amount of water I used, not so much the paint itself. Um, and with the RNL paints again, the amount of granulation has decreased. So I think that's what the main difference is between the different, um, the different uh, series or different levels of paint, like the, the different tiers, um, the more expensive the paint, the more of these cool effects you're going to get with the pigments. The pigments are going to flow with the water a lot better, they're going to have a, a bit more of a mind of their own, and that's really great if you are doing like more sort of abstract art, or or you want to like get a loose and natural feel. Um, if you want the paint to act really predictably, and you want like the colour that you see on the palette to be laid down with minor disturbances, um, then I think going for a cheaper paint will definitely work better. Like I could compare the RNL paints to kind of like a watered down acrylic. They're not gonna they're not gonna flow, they're not gonna move as well. But if you're like working like if you want to do illustrations or if you want to do very like sort of simple um, simple paintings then there's nothing wrong with these. They, they do give a really nice result. So yeah, try not to judge these paintings too much like solely on their aesthetic. Try, if, like, if you were looking to compare these paints, try looking more for like how the pigment moves and how that could translate in the, into the type of art that you want to do. Because obviously this type of painting isn't for everyone. Um, I did make some mistakes here and there, like the, the faces aren't perfect and I don't want people to be like, oh, like, the Winsor Newton one has a weird, like, streak down the face, Winsor Newton must be shit, or, you know, like, Van Gogh has a weird brown patch, like, you know, that's, that's not, like, the purpose of this demonstration. Um, if you wanted to do some cool, like, aliens or textures or landscapes, uh, anything that might require a little bit more variation in the colour, then I think it's definitely worth investing in a slightly more expensive paint, whether that is the Van Gogh or 
Winston Newton like I've got here, or even like Daniel Smith. Um, that's like a sort of a paint that's sort of on par in my opinion with Winsor Newton and they get some really nice granulation effects as well. Um, but yeah, if you guys liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up or leave a comment or something along those lines. And if you would like to see another comparison video, let me know because I have a lot more paints that I can compare if you're interested. So like I mentioned, I've got a Winsor & Newton here. I've got this little circle palette that I got from the Rijksmuseum. I've got watercolour pencils. I've got watercolour markers. Ooh. Uh, literally, I've got a ton of things I can review and compare and let me know if that interests you at all because, I mean, um, your wish is my command. <laughs> Alright guys, I hope you have a nice day and I'll catch you next week. Bye.